Hey friends, you're watching Brainstorm Acres. I'm Henry. I live on our 43 acre off-grid homestead with my wife, Irene. We've been building and rebuilding this place now for 18 years next week. So 17 years that we've actually lived on it full time. We live in the high desert of northern Arizona where we actually have four seasons. We'll have some snow in the winter. We have a lot of heat in the summer. We have a little bit of rain in the fall and a little bit of rain in the spring. Today I'm going to be working on this 50 year old B7200 Kubota tractor. It's a compact tractor. I've been using it on the homestead now for two years and it won't start. Well, more to be specific, it won't even turn over. There's no click or anything else. So I'm going to go through some basic troubleshooting. This is a pretty simple machine. Unfortunately, like other things, I don't have schematics and I don't have instructions. I'm going to be using a simple digital multimeter, uh, DMM or DVM. I'll be using that to check the continuity, that is whether or not there's a connection between two points. And I'll also be checking the voltage. So the first thing I'm going to do is check the voltage in this battery. Let's see if we have at least 12 volts. Twelve point seven eight. So a uh, lead acid battery, which is what this is, that's typically in most older vehicles and even some new vehicles. Twelve point six, twelve point seven is a high voltage. That's that's a fully charged battery. So I know that the battery itself isn't a problem. I'm going to look to see if the wiring in this dash panel is accessible without taking things apart. I've disconnected the battery. That way I won't be accidentally trying to engage the starter while I'm doing this test. 
when I turn the ignition switch to the right, it tr tries to engage the starter. When I let loose of it, it turns back because it has a spring in it that returns it back to a normal running position. I'm going to probe around at the connections, see if I can actually gain access to them. In order to do this, since I don't have any power going to the, to the switch, I'm going to switch to my ohm scale. Now this is a cheap meter, so I have to switch the common, that's this black lead here, to a different part of the meter. That allows me to measure resistance. Now let's see if I have continuity. Let's see if the probes zero out and they aren't. Now let's see what's going on here. Now this speaker is broken. Boy, that really puts a wrinkle in the works. So I'll see if I can do some other kinds of troubleshooting. Well, what can I test if I can't check continuity? Well, I can try putting the connection back on the battery and trying the starter one more time. This connection to the battery is fine, it's tight. Let's see what happens with the other one. Well, I'm not sure that this battery terminal actually connects up well. It isn't very tight, and I can see that the bolt has been snugged down as far as it goes. So I think what I'm going to do is find a piece of wire or something to act as a shim between the terminal post and this battery cable connector. Well, you'll notice that I took my wedding ring off. I don't really enjoy working around electricity of any kind when I'm wearing a ring because I don't want to accidentally weld my ring. And that would give me a nasty burn. I have a small piece of wire that I'm going to put in between this terminal post here and the connector. I'm not trying to use that wire to make the connection. What I'm trying to do is simply take some of the slack out of this connection. Because it's possible that if the connection wasn't tight enough that it might, just might, give me the same kind of symptoms that I'm having right now. I don't think so, but we're going to try removing that as a possibility. I need to pick up a few tools and get ready. So I need to sit in the seat when I try to start this thing. And because there's a possibility that it might start, I want to make sure that I'm prepared. Now, before I try using this ignition switch, I'm going to use the volt scale on my multimeter again to make sure that everything is is reading correctly here and I'll see if I can find which terminal in this switch actually connects to the battery. Now I'm back on voltage scale on this multimeter. I'm gonna have to find my other good multimeter because I know that one works correctly for measuring continuity. Okay I'm measuring 12 point eight volts there. Oh, 
my hat has to come off. It's in the way. All right. Let's see what I can see. Yeah, none of those terminals are accessible. And the main power terminals not accessible from this position. Now, if I were able to contort myself underneath this dash panel, I might be able to measure, but my arms aren't long enough to put one probe on the ground terminal and the other probe back up here under this ignition switch. But let's see what I can do. Well, still can't get access to it. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and try turning the engine over. Don't want my hat to be in the engine. Push the brake in. No power to the starter. Now, we know that the battery has 12 volts. I can't check the ignition switch with this panel installed. So I guess I'm going to, oh boy, in order to take it off, I have to take off this steering wheel, unbolt it here, and then I can gain access to the back of that switch. Well, I'm going to see if there's another way of gaining access to it. Well, I think I'm going to have to get some penetrating oil to lubricate this nut that holds the steering wheel on because it has some corrosion on it and I don't want to be knocking the edges off the nut that holds the steering wheel on. And the steering wheel has oh, about 60 degrees of play in it, so when I take this off, I'm going to check the linkage underneath and see how that's looking. Well, that's about as far as I'm going to get right now, but when I get at pulling this thing apart, I'll bring you along. What a shame. Now, on the other hand, I'll be able to check some other things that don't appear to be working right now. My glow plug indicator isn't working. There's supposed to be some lights that are possible on this. There's a switch for that. I guess I'll do some overdue deferred maintenance from the person that I bought the tractor from and didn't do. Well, it's going to be another adventure.